Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another locomotive review. Now today I'm going to be showing you one of my all time favourite Hornby Railroad locomotives and it's this which is the Southern Railway Schools class. Now yes it is a railroad locomotive and basically railroad locos compared with the main Hornby range are a little bit cheaper but they also don't have as much detail on them but I personally find them to have really really good value for money so yes actually I love them. And also, I have a second one to unbox today, so yeah, it is a double unboxing, which is great news, uh, because I did find one in a different livery, which I quite liked. So, this one's my favourite, so I'm going to save that one for just a moment, and I'm going to open this one first. Now, I've had this one for a couple of years, actually, and I think this cost me around £50 back in whenever it was I bought it. Now, if I just show you the end of the box very quickly, you can see that this R number is R3172. SR440 Schools Class Cheltenham, so that's the name of this one. And I guess I'll get this one out straight away because it's quite a lot to get through today, what would there be in two? Alright, first of all then we have this, which is the Operating and Maintenance Instructions, and this does the Compound, the County, Hunt and Schools Class. So I've shown you these before, but there it is. It's just um, the basics, it shows you how to oil things, it shows you how to take the body off and how to fit the chip. So all very useful if you ever need to take it apart. And if I flip this lid up, you can see the loco. I don't know what this livery is called, but uh, I guess you'll see when I get the other one out. Um, so if anybody knows what this livery is called, uh, compared with the other one, uh, please let me know. But first of all then, the detail pack. And as you can see, it is just a pair of vacuum pipes, which is pretty usual for a railroad loco. And I always think that's quite a nice touch, because if you bought it, you know, for your kid or something, it means you can stick something onto the loco, and then you've had a part of building it, haven't you? So it feels a little bit more satisfying when you get it on the line. Okay, let's get this one out then, and this one is number 925, and it's in a darker green, than the other, uh, a lighter green, sorry, than the other one. Uh, the other one is a lot darker than this. Okay, how am I going to hold this? So there you have it, Cheltenham, very nice. And to be honest, for a railroad loco, this does have a, quite a bit of detail, as we're going to see in a moment. So yeah, very nice indeed. I'm just gonna pop this one down then. You'll see it again later, of course. But I've got the other one to unbox, which I like much more, actually. I think this one is much nicer. I bought this one much more recently, and it cost me just under £30, which is a crazy bargain. And plus, I like the livery more, so I had to get this one. All right, the end of the box then. This one is R3158, SR440 Schools Class, and this one is Dover. And as you can see by the tender there, it's number 911. Right, I'm going to get this one open then. And it's just the same, so I'm not going to show you any of the paperwork or detail, but you do have it. It's the same same thing as far as I can tell. And if we lift this up, there you go. Uh, I, I would, as a guess, call this olive green, but I'm not sure. You do have the detail pack with the vacuum pipes again, but obviously we won't go into that. So yes, there it is. I like this one a lot more. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just personal preference. I think they're both very nice, incidentally, but I just I think this one has the edge. Right, let me show it to you then. And I think actually this one is the one I'm going to review up close because I have done the other one before. So there it is, Dover. Very, very nice. And it's just, as you can see, a little bit darker green compared with the other one. So let me get them both together for you. Oops, before I... This is not going to go well. <laughs> there we go. Just for a little colour comparison there. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, darker green one up onto the white background in just a second to show you it in more detail. But first of all, here is a little bit of information on the schools class and their history. So the schools class was introduced to the Southern Railway in 1930 and they were one of the most successful designs by Richard Maunsell. They earned the title of the most powerful 440s in Europe at the time and were later classified by the BR as a 5P, which is very, very high indeed. The schools were quite unusual actually because 440s were becoming quite old fashioned basically towards the end of the 20s and yet these still replaced the older 440s, which were the L1s I believe on the Southern Railway and they were actually even a massive improvement over some 460 designs. In total, 40 were produced over five years following 1930, and luckily three of them still remain in preservation. So my lighter green one, Cheltenham, is one of them, but sadly Dover wasn't one. Okay, let me take Dover up onto the white background then, and I will show you her in a little more detail. And there she is then, number 911, Dover, up on the white background. And I say this quite a lot, but it's definitely true with this one. 
For a railroad model, this one is super duper impressive. Yes, the paint job is absolutely beautiful, but the amount of separately fitted detail is truly impressive, and I think it is probably one of the better detailed railroad models ever. Okay, so let's look at the livery first of all. Of course it is in this olive green, for lack of a better word. I'm not sure if that's entirely correct or not, but it looks pretty olive-like to me. But aside from that, you've got this beautiful white lining, which covers the model and it's very un unusual to get railroad models with such good lining. Of course you've got it all along the, the main plate of the loco here, you've got it on the uh, on the boiler of course, and uh, all around the cab as you can see on the steps, everywhere, it's just fantastic. And even the valve chest have three different colours on them, look you've got the white lining, you've got the green and then the black, so it really is a very elaborate uh, paint job I would say, and for a railroad model that is very unexpected but I like that a lot. Separately fitted parts then, you have an awful lot of them on here. Yes, this uh, pipe work across the top of the boiler here is moulded on, but you have the handrail which is separately fitted, you have the smoke deflectors, you've got this metal reversing rod which is metal and not plastic, you also have this pipe work on the uh, top there, I suppose it's pipe work isn't it? You've got another pipe here around the front which looks like it's separately fitted as well. And then you've got separately fitted brass whistles on the front there and even the safety valves of course which is uh, pretty normal. So yeah a massive array of separately fitted detail on this one and uh, yeah it really is truly impressive. And if we look inside the cab very quickly, you can see that parts of it have been painted. Now, this wasn't new, this was from a previous owner, so I don't know if they did this. Um, normally, Hornby don't paint the cabs of railroad models, but this one has been done, which is very nice indeed. And uh, it does look to be very well done, so who knows, it could have been a factory job, I'm not sure. Okay, let's have a quick look at the nameplate then, as you can see, Dover. It looks, it's not like an etched nameplate really, but uh, it does look to be very high in quality, so I like that very much. And uh, generally, it is a beautifully detailed locomotive, I would say. Definitely not just for kids, and uh, I suppose serious modelers could enjoy this one as well. Okay, let's look at the tender then. Of course, that uh, lovely green colour scheme continues. It's even on the wheels, as you can see. And then you've got the Southern E911 on the tender, which is also very nice. And then, of course, you've got the white lining, just like on the locomotive. Up on top, the coal is quite nice. It is a little bit chunky, um, but... You know, that's how these are. Of course, this is based on the old tender-driven model, so the coal is going to be pretty large to make space for the motor, which used to go inside there. Around the back, you've got handrails, as you can see, and moulded on, uh, I suppose, their footholds. And you've even got lamp irons. Look at that. That is very unusual for railroad locos. So, yes, truly a very, very beautifully detailed locomotive. I really like this one. And hopefully, then, you can see why I consider that this is one of the best railroad models uh, that Hornby have made. Okay, well that's her detail then, let's move on to her performance and see if she runs just as good as she looks. Ah, there she is down on the railway then, the beautiful Hornby Railroad Schools class, and I'm going to show you just how well she runs in just a second, but first, here's what's going to be running on the line. She's about to couple up to a rake of six Pullman coaches, as you can see, it's slightly mixed liveries there. And then on the very inner line, I have another Southern 440, which is the T9, number 708 in uh, Southern Black. And she's pulling a range of small boxcars. And then on the middle line, we have, of course, Cheltenham, which is the other version. It's just the same model in a different livery. And she's going to be pulling some of the Southern Green coaches, uh, which are Hornby ones as well. And elsewhere on the layout, there are six other locomotives. They all have a common theme except one. So see if you can tell uh, which one the odd one out is. But for now then, let's get 911, uh, 911 or uh, Dover um, up and running then. So she's on an express point, or shortly will be on an express point in a moment. Uh, so that should really give her a fantastic slow speed test. So I've just moved the camera. Uh, yeah, let's give this a go. So I'm just going to ease the power up until she starts to move. Wow, that didn't take long. And there you go. Is she moving there? Yes, she is moving. So look at that. Isn't that incredible for a railroad model? I'll say it again. It tends to be that the railroad models run the best of any Hornby model, in my opinion. And I'm just going to speed her up very slightly because I know this isn't the most interesting thing to watch. And she's just on the dead part of the express points just there. Wow, incredible. Okay, let me bring her back. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Okay, let me send her back then and she can couple up to those coaches and we'll see what she can pull.
Now unfortunately I have to say that the Loco is quite light and she also runs a traction tyre which always deducts a few marks for me because I really don't like those things but not to worry, let's see if she can manage six coaches which is quite a nice load for her I think. Yeah, of course no wheel slip because she has the traction tyre and some people actually quite like a bit of wheel slip so obviously that isn't going to happen with this. Okay, let's get the Cheltenham version up and running then. Here we go. I'll try and do a gentle start. And the other problem with traction tyres, of course, is that if you're trying to stop them gently, they can tend to jolt to a halt. <laughs> and finally the T9 then, let's see what she can do. Very nice, smooth runner, this one. A little bit of uh, wheel slip there. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's have a running session. There we go, there's the uh, Cheltenham. Managing the coaches very, very nicely. And Dover's not struggling with hers either. All six of them, which is very impressive. And there's the T9 looking lovely. With her assortment of boxcars. Lots of crisp snacks and nuts there. That's a Cheltenham going down the hill. So do let me know then which is your preferred livery, um, whether you like the this, the olive green one of Dover, or the more lighter green of Cheltenham. And by the way, I also checked inside Cheltenham to see if her cab was detailed as well, and yes, there is painting inside that. So, yep, truly the first railroad model I've had, I think, that has a painted cab. So that's pretty cool. Where's my favourite one? Come on. So yes, this one's my favourite anyway. I just, I think that livery is gorgeous. But they're both very nice, as I say, don't get me wrong. I, I do like both of them. But, yeah, I had to have that one. <laughs> Couldn't help it. T9 going at a nice gentle speed. Oops, sorry, I'm just trying to move my leg. I can hear that something started squeaking on this train, so I might need to get the oil pen out and sort those coaches out, but we'll see. Okay, and now for my ratings then on the Railroad Schools class. Now this year I'm going to be comparing all models equally, so railroad models will be compared to railways models and backman models and all that. So yes, the ratings may seem a little bit harsh, but I'm trying to do it um, evenly across the board so that the rankings make sense. So detail, 7 out of 10, yes, it's definitely one of the better railroad models I've seen, but it certainly doesn't match up to the prestige of the railways range. Performance, 8 out of 10, I've deducted one mark for the light weight of it, and another mark for the traction tyre, but apart from that they are beautiful, smooth, quiet, and powerful runners. Character, 10 out of 10, I do love the school class and always have done, so I think the character is fantastic. Build quality is also pretty high, 9 out of 10, I've not had to fix anything on these. And value, you know, for less than £30 I paid for one of them. It's excellent value. Obviously Hornby charges quite a bit more than that, but I still think the value on them is pretty good. So 9 out of 10, which gives us overall 8.45 out of 10. So if we head over to the rankings, that of course puts the schools class second under the B12. Okay, let's carry on. Alright then everybody, well that should just about do it for today. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. 
Of course if you did, please feel free to leave a like on the video or even a comment because I do love to hear from you. And also if you'd like to, you can check out my Facebook or Twitter pages and they are at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be lovely to see you on there and also if you'd like to put your pictures up on the wall of fame, please send them in to samstrains at outlook.com and I can do that for you. But for now, once again, thank you very much for watching. As always, I do always love to have your company. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So see you very soon, everybody. Cheers.